Well, welcome, Stoa Theodore, tonight to Kayu Conversation. And what a story you're going to hear tonight. This man has a powerful story. And, and the reason we're telling this story, you know, the Bible says that he heals our brokenhearted, he sets the captives free, and then he displays us and receive glory. And so it is a display when you see what Satan meant for evil, God turns around to good. And every one of our lives is a testimony of the greatness of God. Welcome Teresa Thomas from Chicago. Welcome Claudia. Welcome. People are still joining. And tonight we have Stowell Theodore. And so Stowell, tell us about your life many years ago when you say you, you were seeking truth. Oh, yes. Well, um, I became very curious about, you know, just my existence and my purpose in life and, and so on. And that curiosity peaked when I just could not connect with, with what I really wanted to do in life. Um, I, I'll have to go back a little bit in, in, in preparation for this conversation tonight. I started to, to out of the years because um, I, I had uh, mentioned uh, that you know I, I began to smoke marijuana. Yeah. And um, and it was actually quite a long time. I didn't realize how long it was. It, uh, from the age of 18. You started to smoke marijuana. I started marijuana. to smoke. Yeah. And uh, the, the time I gave that up was when I was 42. Wow. So yeah. you smoked marijuana that, that long? That long. Woo! Yeah. Uh, so so let me so let me ask you now. You said you were seeking truth. You wanted mm -hmm. to know truth. You went to the point of going to university to do psychology, doing philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're speaking. You're seeking truth. Yes. Truth about what? Truth about you know what 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 are all these things I'm seeing in life? Uh, where creation? Who is God? Where did God come from? Uh, you know and. And so on. And some of these thoughts can overwhelm you sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> because when, when you get into the, and especially if you're taking marijuana, and then mm. you get into these deep meditations, Very deep. and then you begin to think about what is life, what mm. is truth, yeah. and now he's going to do psychology, and he went to one university, and then he did social studies, because he's seeking truth. And when we hear tonight about what this is seeking, we realize that there was a void in your life. Yes. There, there was empty. There's something that needed to be filled. So would you say that there, it was a void that was driving you to fill it with something? or? Yeah, it was a void and um, because I didn't understand it at the time, but I knew that um, there was something more. And, um, and I thought I would find it with, with smoking marijuana and, and so on. And, 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 in looking back, I, I was being led in, in all the wrong directions. I was um, reading up on um, on Hinduism and and, and and many other religions, and and um, you know I, I used to walk with a little backpack, um, like a, a hippie type of a bag. You know, yeah. I had all my you, books. You were like a and, hippie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you had all your books and all the different religions. Yes. Yes. Because so you're I seeking would, truth. Yeah. yeah. Go to my friend's place, and we would uh, we would just be smoking and trying to. To think things out and yeah. so on, and, and uh, discuss things out. Discuss things <laughs> out, yeah. And you know, it's amazing when we are trying to seek truth, and we go to our friends that are that have the void themselves, <laughs> and they are here now under the influence of, of drugs and becoming philosophical. Yes. And it's amazing at that in that stage, you can think that you're so wise, you oh, know, because oh, yes. you're, oh, yes. you're, you're, you're you're getting yes. deep yes. Yes. in yes. truth, yes. Uh, and yes. so. And then that led into, you were having some strong issues with your son. Well, uh, yeah, um, you know, I, I was going along fine and, and um, smoking away. The one thing I was doing was being very professional about my, my addiction to weed. Because <laughs> I, I, was, uh, I was hiding it from everybody except my friends. Yes. Um, I knew from my, 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 my children in my home, my wife knew, um, she tolerated it and, 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 and you know, because uh, thank God for her, <laughs> the pillar in my life, the, you know, the support in my life wow. and, and so on. Um, I, I was a, a professional businessman, I, I was into sales, I, was, I became the, the general sales manager of, of, a, of a huge company, um, I, I, one of the branches, uh, you know, and, um, and but but this thing was 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 had me drawn, but I was able to somehow 
maintain what I needed to do. But once once business responsibilities were over, um, my life at home did not get that same level of commitment I gave to work. Yes, and you know it's amazing things when things are not going right. People will be so responsible at work, they'll do everything at work, but when they come home then things fall apart because we feel like we don't have to try that extra yeah. mile. So it was obviously affecting your marriage. That's right. Because That's right. even though your wife is strong, she still need her husband. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and she still need comfort and she yeah. still need, yeah. need you do. And so that was a void. And so, how did your son and you get into the altercations and the, well, the fighting? I came to a rude awakening one day when I realized that he was also getting into weed oh, and smoking okay. away. <laughs> and uh, it was a shock. And um, so I tried to confront him. About uh, it. Like, like a big hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> And try to say, get on the right path. Okay, you know, and so right. on. And, uh, you know, that, those conversations did not go very well. And, um, you know, there was, um, you know, there was tension between him and, and me. And, and then, you know, uh, my wife was, 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 was it caught in between and all of this. So it, it just, it just escalated, escalated and escalated. And, uh, and, um, you know, it came to the point where I had to be able to, 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 to rescue him. I felt I had to rescue him. But thank God for a, a very close family friend. Um, his son and my son were very close. And um, one day he took the two boys. I, I was, they I they were about how old? old they were time. Um, in their maybe around late teens, early, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah early 16, 20. 17. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, took them to a church called Deeper Life Christian Ministries at that time. And, um, and my son came back home with a cassette tape that had a message on it. I did not listen to that tape for up to two weeks, but he threw the tape at, at me. And he said, you think I'm always out there doing a lot of bad things, but I just want you to know I was in church today. That was a Sunday. I'm in bed. I am in bed late. Party the night before. And, 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 smoke the night before. And, and so he got up and went out. Yes. And, and, and so... Um, Isn't this something, though? Here we're talking about the altercation between a father wanting to be a father, even though he himself is struggling, but telling the son what to do. In other words, don't do what I do, do what you're supposed to do, so you're going to try to straighten him out yes. when you yourself is still feeling that void. That's right. And so you can imagine the mother in the middle of this, the, the, the home, the, it affects the marriage, because when there's a fighting with the kids and the one parent, it affects everybody. It does. Yeah. And, and it became a rough period of your life. It was. Um, on top of that, uh, you know, my wife and I, um, my wife was... Had, had accepted the Lord long before me, but she was holding on to, to the relationship in a way that um, gave her hope that one day I would come to the Lord. And um, many times she would ask me to come to church with her, to, to go to a, a church uh, close to where we lived. And uh, the truth is uh, I accommodated that twice. And I said, no more again, because... I, I didn't, I, I felt it wasn't like a strange thing for me in that atmosphere of the church. People were hugging each other and so on, and, and I didn't enjoy that. So, but I, I, I went back and um, her biggest struggle uh, during my time of, of um, always smoking weed was, was really trying to have a discussion with me where I could not understand what she was saying. I would take a simple thing in my big, brilliant mind Philosophical take a, mind. Yes, take a simple thing and 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 stretch it out. <laughs> and, and, and and she would say, "I just cannot talk to you when you're in that in that mind state of oh mind." Oh my God! Yeah. It's almost like he was losing his mind. You know, we have to thank so. God for for women who press through in prayer. Yeah. going through this kind of a situation because you want to talk it through but then with the pride factor because it's an issue you, you know you have a void but yet it, there's a pride factor that makes you think you're philosophical oh, yes. you know because he's doing philosophy at university he's doing all kind of things studying all the religions and yet his mind is messed up but it's messed up with pride 
So the argumentative, you know, comes up, and so his wife could not win one discussion with him. And, you know, we want to welcome Anna McCoy and Austin and Antoinette and Philroy Bailey. We want to welcome people from Africa. We want to welcome people from Indonesia and across Canada that is here with us tonight. And you have joined us, and we are talking about the powerful salvation. And that's why we call it Kail Conversations. Because the word kail means powerful, it means wise, it means favor with God, it means strong, it means a, a charisma. It, it is so powerful that we're talking about powerful conversation. Because here you have a man, stubborn, um, his wife can't reach him, um, he's trying to get his son sorted out to stop smoking marijuana while he's smoking marijuana, but he's the son, so he must listen. And, you know, and, and the wife is saying enough is enough because every time you try to talk, the philosophy comes out and you know the weirdness that comes with that because it's not about truth now, it's about pride. Mm -hmm. And so tell us what happened now when your son came to church and he heard the message and then what prompted you then to go to church? Well, it took me a few weeks to put the message in my, my car. Because, of course, it's pride again. <laughs> I mean, who are you to tell me what to listen oh, to? Yeah. And the son is saying, no, you need to listen to this. I mean, <laughs> what, a, what a situation. Yeah. So I, I, I plugged that cassette tape in the car. I was on the, well, on the 410. Actually, yeah. that's the highway I was on. I remember it clearly where I was, um, just before the underpass of Clark Boulevard, and I was mesmerized by that message. It was all about relationships between parents and children. Wow. And I think your son facetiously said, you think you know how to parent, you need to listen to mm -hmm. this. <laughs> And that yeah. made a difference. And so here it is. And we welcome Bishop Sharon that has just joined. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, we need to have your comments here. And we need to have your questions here. Because this man of God is now the senior associate pastor of one of the strongest churches in Canada. And he is a marriage counselor. And he works with youth and he, it is just amazing. He is a great father, a great husband, a great honorable man. So you're talking about Caillou glory. You're talking about the powerful glory of God that changed a life. And so if you're going through any situation with relationship and patiently waiting in your marriage for God to do something, this is to show that God is greater than whatever angle the enemy comes from his way. Amen. Even with a mind that is into philosophy and into all of this. And I tell you, it's not easy to talk to someone like that because the pride is so strong that I'm definitely not from his wife. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, you know, so this is so exciting. But the, the message that you heard in the car was talking about parents and and children. Yeah. Nothing I had read up until this point could compare to that word that came from God. And it's, it's and with and all by the philosophy. The way, it, obviously, it was your message. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was your message that you taught. And it just, just, I mean, I played this thing and I listened to it over and over. I went home because my wife wasn't in the car with me. I, I, we both listened to the message and it just kept, kept really... Um, bringing a lot of things home to us, yes. you know, and so I, I, I realized that, that um, you know, that was such a powerful thing because I grew up with the Bible, but that was on the shelf most of the time. I never read the Bible. But you were reading philosophy. I was reading all of the books, <laughs> but the Bible. The Bible was always in the house, Yeah. but that was not the book I was reading. Okay. I was searching everything else. Okay. <sighs> so... <laughs> So, and then, so when you came to mm -hmm. church then, yes. because your friend, whose son was in the same situation, call, yeah. Yeah, invited you. Yes, I, I, I called my son's, my, the father of my, my son's, uh, my best son's friend. friend, best friend, and he took them both to the church. So I said to him, wow, this is incredible. That's a great message my son brought home and, and so on. And he says, well, would you like to go? 
I says, yeah, yeah, I think I'd like to go, man. Where, where is this place? So we, we made an appointment to go down. It was in October 1993. Yeah. And, um, and we, we, um, we got into his car. He drove us down. And I, I walked into the, the, the double doors of, doors of the church. And just the color of the building inside as well was so warm. The, the, the people were warm. The, the worship was, was just amazing. And then, of course, the word came. And uh, I, I just it was like another powerful word. And, and so, well, my son ended up um, loving it so much going there that uh, he he got saved right away uh, um i i didn't get saved right away but um did, <laughs> you, keep, did you keep coming back well we we were ready to go back every sunday but my son would not let us just go on sundays he he would insist that we take him there on fridays as well okay so we went fridays and sundays <laughs> and um so i was ready to take all that in but you know i was still holding back a little bit but he was in deep into it and, um, you know, I always say to him, if it wasn't for you, how God used you, um, you know, uh, you. We, we would have been still stranded. Wow. You know? And so what was the point that you decide, you know, God touched your heart? Yeah. What, 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 what was, it? was it a, a, a service or yes. what happened? It was a New Year's Eve service in 1993. And um, I said nothing to my wife. She had already accepted the Lord. Um, but was tolerating me. <laughs> and um, we, you know, uh, she, she's such a great, great asset in my life, great, great support in my life. It's incredible. So we were sitting way in the back, in, in, in the back row, and um, she's sitting next to me, and the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit was just speaking to me, your message with that day. I don't remember much of it, but all I know is that I, I kept saying, this is the time, this is the time, I got to do it, I got to do it, I got to I gotta jump in. And you made that altar call. I got up, didn't say a word to her, and I walked up all the aisle and then accepted the Lord, gave my heart to God, and I said, that's it, and the rest is history. Wow, yeah. a powerful story of the Kyle Pillars. You can see the Kyle Pillars in action, the worship. Um, he decided that what he was seeking was not just truth, because truth is a person. And he found truth. You know, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then, not only the truth, but now he gave his life to the Lord. And you said, now you're seeking now purpose. But I want you to tell us about that beautiful experience when you and your son went to a men's retreat. <laughs> wow, yeah. Um, it was uh, quite a moment because um, my son was still dealing with a lot of stuff. Um, you know, he had been very rebellious. Um, you know, many times we wanted to kick him out of the house uh, and so on. But, you know, God just God was doing a work and preserving us. So um, I got so involved in, 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 the, uh, in, in, the, in the church. I was, I was serving. I was involved in the men's ministry. And, and so on, and, and my son was just going along. And uh, we had one retreat that we had planned, and um, I, uh, he, he said he's coming, and, and um, it was for men, but you know, he was a, a young adult at that time. And so he came along, and that retreat just blew everything wide open. He, we were up at, uh, at the front of the, the, the room and, and ministering, and we were in worship. And he, he actually just left where he was seated, came up to the front and openly um, apologized and asked forgiveness for all of the rebellion that he had showed to me in, 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 the, in, in his life. And um, there was a lot of crying, a lot of weeping, oh, wow. other men were crying and, wow. and so on. And it was a big, a big yeah. breakthrough for, for us as yeah. a family. Yeah. What a tender moment when God can heal the soul. And, and literally make a, a, a rebellious person tender and a strong, proud father tender to the point where publicly this young man says, Dad, please forgive me for all my rebellion. And he 
it's honoring the son and the son is honoring the father and now the pillar of honor where you're honoring each other and all the men are weeping um, what a tender moment and this is the supernatural power of God for only God can melt a heart and make a heart go move out from the pride and the arrogance and the rebellion and say I am sorry because most of the time in the pride moment we don't see ourselves at fault it's always the other persons that it's at fault we are the perfect one we are because of all that proud arrogance and that turned around into the beautiful relationship and so we, we you know this is I'm so glad you're coming from Zimbabwe Nampilo welcome all the people coming from different parts of Africa welcome Libya is there um, Zimbabwe is there Indonesia is there welcome and we wanted to, to say now here it was a marriage that was a marriage that was in you know strained but now you now had to now become a father and a husband and and, and what what was the changes that you had to intentionally make in your life in that relationship I want to share a small little change that took place. It wasn't even something I did intentionally, but the Holy Spirit was moving in my life. Um, I remembered, you know, um, just trust in, in between my wife and I. She is very simple, but very, very significant. Um, she asked me to, to go to the store to pick something up for her. And... She then phoned me while I was on the way to the store, and she said to me, by the way, I have a bag in the back seat, and it's a surprise. Do not look into it. I said to her, don't worry, honey. Done. And I remembered hanging up that phone and thinking, wow, she can actually trust me now. Wow. That I will not look into her bag. Why? Because... I am a man of God. Wow. <laughs> it, it seems so like, wow, if I'm a man of God and I say no to her, I'm not going to go in the bag, I'm not going to go in the bag. <laughs> so, so it was like that wow. significant to me yeah. that, that so if I give my restored. word, yeah, yes. if I give my word, to your now wife. she, yeah, she could, she could count on that word. Wow. So yeah. now the character was now healed by God. Yes. So that you become a godly husband yes. to your wife. Yes. So so what were the changes now as a godly husband to your wife? What did she notice? What what, what were some of the well, changes? Uh, well of course you stopped smoking weed. Yes, absolutely. And and <laughs> I was I was able to to be grounded uh, and, and, and really have some good family time. We were, we were taking the worship songs, we were coming home and worshiping together. Um, we had family meetings, um, you know, just doing those things that, 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 that helped us to understand um, our new relationship with God. And, um, and so you, you, you became the priest of your home? Yeah, it, it was a gradual thing, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I, 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 just, I, I just loved God so much and I, and I, and I knew that, that if I'm going to to honor God, I'm going to have to do it by how I respond to my wife or my or my children. Wow! You see? Wow! And um, and and so, so it was. So I, I I need you to explain that seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are all the men listening? Yeah. So for you to respond to God, yeah. you need to know how to respond to your wife and children. Yes, I, I needed to I needed to to make sure I honor God with what I say to them. Wow. Or what I do, you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't a matter of, and, and uh, you know, apologizing now wow. was, was easier if I made a mistake. Sometimes you talk out of turn, right? right. And so if I, if I had to, if I, if I said something out of turn and, and so on, it wasn't that hard now to go and say to my son, my daughter, um, you know, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Wow. And, and, and all of that led to a healing process mm. that, that allowed, allowed them allowed our relationship to grow um i just i just really felt god did a work in me to to position me to make sure that that his presence was kept in my house wow yeah. so as a father then what are some of the roles that you had to 
um, do as a father, as a, father. as a godly father? What yeah. are some of the things that you intentionally did with your family? You said you had to provide, you yeah. had to protect. We, yeah, provide, protect. It, it was, um, there was less arguments about, especially around the budget, right? My wife wanted me to pay certain things and she was struggling with me with tithing. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that, 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 that took a little while, but but I, I, I slowly began to realize, and um, she would say to me, I say to her, well, honey, I, I, I get it, that's the word of God, but, but if, I, if we can't pay, uh, if we don't have enough money for, for, for this bill and that bill, and, you know, how, how are we supposed to, to, to tithe? And um, by the grace of God, again, he brought a powerful uh, man in our life, um, an accountant, who says, showed us uh, the, where we were robbing God. Oh, Lord. And, um, <laughs> And you know, and, and the thing about it was once I saw it, I grabbed hold of it. Yes. And so God was going to work in your life now to bring mm -hmm. order. Yes. Because order precedes glory. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. And again, this topic tonight is about the powerful salvation that saved a family and delivered members of the family yeah. from drug addiction. Mm -hmm. I'm here with Stowell Theodore. And it's such a powerful testimony because this gentleman who shared openly for those that are just joining that he was addicted to marijuana he started from early teen late teens you know 18 or so smoked for more than 20 years then until, from, I got until you know <laughs> so maybe 20 or 30 years you know and yet now god done is done such a great job i tell you his wife adores him literally adores him and you know he is so protective of her you know it, it it is beautiful to see the love in action because love is not just a talk but he honors her he protects her she's like a little flower that he has to protect and then she is his and then he is her king so she makes sure he eats right and everything and so it's just beautiful to see that when each person decide to live like God in a godly way and to honor God's word this is why the Kyle pillars are so important because what he did was he made these seven pillars be the the focus and the platform for his spiritual growth he was going to grow in worship he honored God he was going to grow in power the ability to be a great father and a great wife he was going to grow in honor so that he honored his wife and he honored his son and daughters even to the point that he has a son and two daughters and he was able to say to them when sorry when he is wrong and sometimes that's hard for parents you know it's always the parents wrong and say sorry say sorry well show me how to do it <laughs> children are saying don't tell me what to do show me how to do it and, and then to grow in favor with God he grew in tremendous favor with God grow in favor with wealth even as he put his finances right and decide I must tithe because that is God's principle and then he has grown in tremendous influence you know I must share a story that this man when he got turned around from God he became such a humble servant he, he was a, a general manager you know in sales for a large one of the largest furniture um, company in Canada had many people working under him but I came to church driving into the into the into the church one day and I saw him with with with, with some kind of an instrument picking up picker upper pick you call that you know picker upper picking up um, extra things from the lobby area so that when the people came to the church there would be nothing that is out of place and God saw, made me see that as I was driving up and God says that is my pastor that is my servant so he's now the senior associate pastor of our church, uh, one of the strongest churches in Mississauga and also in Canada, multicultural church. And he is in charge of operations and he is in charge of the facility management. And, you know, he is in charge of all our 14. He works with our 14 pastors. And it's such a powerful thing. He is one of our strongest marriage counselors. And it's good because, you know, when he's meeting with the couples, he can say to the men, I know exactly how you think, been there, done that, and the t-shirt to wear it. 
but God is able. And so he does a lot of, uh, uh, just an amazing gentle spirit, he, he, you know, ha this man of God. So, so with God, all things are possible. And because we want to give you some takeaway now. What, what, what are some of the stuff? And I was asking him before. And one of the things that we need to know is that you are born with a void. Amen. Right. You are born with a void. So the void that he was saying, he's going to philosophy, he's going to university, take university course in psychology, he took social service courses, and then he began to help the poor on the street, and he began to work with the poor and young people, because find, trying to find something, because that void could never be filled until it was filled with the Creator. And so you have a void that you will never be satisfied, no matter how much money you have. He had the position, well-respected at work, crumbling at home. Why? Because of the void, you don't have balance in your life. And so he filled the void with a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then you were looking for truth, mm -hmm. you know, through philosophy, studied all the religions. But truth is not just a thing, it is a person as well. Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he found truth. And then the void that you have is a void of purpose. Mm -hmm. Because that is part of the real void. Because even as he was fighting with his son, he needed his father. Mm -hmm. And his father of the name of the world is Lord God Almighty. And until you are connected with God as your father, there is that void. And sometimes we're lacking that, that fathering. And this is why Jesus says, call him father. Because he was lacking in the father God in his life. And sometimes people are thinking, well, it's a male father I'm lacking. But it goes deeper. It is the God, the Father who loves you and cares for you and who literally tenderized his son and now he become purpose in the kingdom of God. He is ruling in the kingdoms of God. And so you're not going to get rid of that void. It has to be filled. Because sometimes we think we want to get rid of the void. No, it has to be filled. It has to be filled with the Jesus Christ, your Savior. It has to be filled with the relationship with your Heavenly Father. And it also has to be filled with your purpose. Because for every one of us, there is a purpose for why we're alive. And so he found his purpose now to serve in the kingdom of God. He is helping many marriages being restored. He is running a strong, large organization in our church. He is ruling in a kingdom. He has purpose. And now God can call him not only son, but he calls him servant. That is the void. And so the void that you might be feeling will never be filled until you fill it with who has made you with the void. And so again, I thank you all for coming. And I really want him now to pray tonight for fathers, you know, because I know sometimes fathers, men, are struggling with their identity and struggling with all of these things. So, so what would you say to the men or would you pray for the men or what would you say to the men that are struggling? Because you're saying you intentionally started to honor your wife. Yes. You intentionally started to honor your son yes. and your daughters yes. intentionally. So what can you say to, 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 to the men tonight that are listening? Yes. Well, I, I, I would encourage every man to find his role as the, a servant in their home. Jesus said that he who desires to be the greatest in the kingdom must be the servant of all. In your home, the kingdom of God calls for you to lay your life down for your household, your wife, number one, and, and, and your family. Um, you need to be able to, to, to be the one that has the, 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 the fortitude and the strength of God to, to rise above the, the troubles and the circumstances and the situations that will, that will uh, come to divide and to, to steal and to kill. Um, so I encourage every man tonight to just uh, uh, press in and to trust God and to humble yourself because God has already ha won every battle that your household will come against. Yeah. So, so know that with God all things are possible and it's in the humility um, of, of your attitude 
not, not the, your, your authority as a man in your home is, is related directly to your responsibility. How you fulfill your responsibility, it will allow your authority to be activated. Wow. Uh, it's not in just giving orders or giving commands. It's how you serve, how you roll up your sleeves, how you, how you embrace your children even if they are wrong, how you, how, how you, 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 you give your wife the, 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 the liberty to, to, to speak and to, and, to, and to be able to listen to her. Um, all of these things uh, wow. is God's, God's activation in your life. And when you lay your life down, when you humble your life uh, before God, God is going to exalt you. And he never fails. And, and I thank God. So I want to pray tonight that you and your household will prosper and that you will find your, your, your position as a spiritual covering in your home, as a man who is not in competition with your, your wife or your children because they may have greater talents or gifts than you. Um, but it is in your humility to honor God in what you say and to serve God and, and to find opportunities to exalt God in your household that, that you will reign as the priest in your home. Wow. So, Father wow. God. So, one of the things that we, we notice tonight now is that humility is the root for authority. And that is, that is key, people of God, because it's not about do as I say and rough and, you know, humility is the foundation yes. for authority. And one of the things Stowell said about his wife, he said, sometimes I honor her that even when she's wrong, I still obey. Now, that is huge. Because, you see, when you are powerful, you are powerful. You don't have to try to prove it. You just be powerful. And you can be powerful enough that even if she's saying things, you know, do it this way, do it this way. And he says that he knows that it's not the way. But he says, you know what? He does it that way anyway, just to honor her. And so it's talking about honoring one another, which is the middle pillar. Honor God, honor yourself, and honor one another. And it's not a competition because we're all made in the image and likeness of God. Remember to like us, share, subscribe, and we're, we're happy to have Stowell here to, 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 tonight. And this is such an exciting thank you for joining us. And next week, wow, we have Caroline Marsh that's going to be joining us. And she's going to talk about favor to create wealth. We're talking about one person came into her life and became her coach. And the next thing, this woman is being featured in UK in a program called The Secret Millionaire. And when you hear the story, you can say, why not me? And that is it. With God, all things are possible because God is looking for you to display you and your glory. And remember, if you are watching this, you can, you can replay this over and over again and share it with friends. And your questions, have your questions come. Because afterwards, you know, Stowell is gonna be here to answer questions. And we have a team that can help you with your questions and, and your prayer request, your prayer request. Because that's very important. Because I know um, it's not easy. Uh, you know, for, for you sometimes to do the situation. But if your husband hears or your wife hears, then this will bring the healing because the tenderness of God will heal your heart and heal your soul. With God, all things is possible. See you next time. And remember, we are a Kail generation.